as you just saw, that was a little spec commercial I made for Kripkins Unleashed by Cryptozoic Entertainment. They're these little, cute, monsters, cryptid creatures, and typically, they're actually like, yay big, but now, they're yay yay big, they're pretty big. And I wanna show you some basic visual effects that you can use for toys and products for your video content. So, without further ado, let's talk about some basic VFX stuff. <laughs> So before you do any VFX, I highly recommend doing some pre-planning, establish why you're doing it. And that way you can plan out your shots accordingly and make sure you get all the ingredients that you need for the thing you're gonna cook up in After Effects. So what do we do here? Well, we have these little mini figures of the Kripkins. We have Nessie and Cthulhu and Chupacabra, and we wanted to get it into the larger format version of them. So I need a couple things. I need to make sure I shoot it correctly. Let's first talk about how did I shoot this. So the gear I used for this is pretty simple. I used the Sony A9 camera. I shot this at 24p, 24 frames per second, and in 4K. 3840 by 2160. Now, as far as camera stabilization, I used a tripod and my Edelkrone slider one version two. And the reason why I use this little slider tool is because it's robotic. I can control this guy with my phone here. So if I hold it up and I just like slide, it's gonna move robotically and then you can get some really cool shots now not only did i shoot a lot of these clips with the camera on the slider but i actually put the toys on the slider itself so then i can get some cool spinning effects or moving effects because they're just stationary toys they're cool little statues how can i get them to be dynamic so after you shoot the things that you need then you can bring it into after effects and we can get to the fun part. First, let's talk about layer order. Your layer order is gonna be as follows. You're gonna have your clean plate on the bottom of your timeline. It's the background, so just have that there. The second layer you'll need in your timeline is the clip with the two figures, clips one and two, and you'll use that mainly for the shadows because if you look at the scene, there's still some shadow on the figure, so how are you going to get the shadows to look natural, just make sure you get a shot with the shadows. And then the final piece that you need is the two clips side by side with a transitioning cut between them. And that's where you're gonna be doing your roto brushing, your masking, or your green screening. So then you have a clean slate to add VFX behind and in front and etc. and make it look good. After you set up your layer order, then it's the speed ramping. If you wanna have this clip blend well with some cool transition effects, you need to make sure that your speed ramping and your transitions between all the clips are identical. So what you can do is edit the first clip and then pre-compose that and then copy that same time remapping into your other layers. And if you pre-compose it correctly, everything should sync up perfectly. And like I said, make sure that the three ingredients that you take, the clean plate, clip one and clip two, they're all identical. So this is an easy process for you. Next, we have that top layer, and that's where you're gonna be doing your masking, your roto brushing, or your green screening. Basically, what you have to do is cut out that figure between the cuts, so then you can add any compositing elements behind and in front. The last thing you'll need to get this transition working is a camera track. So just take that main clip that you made and then go to the 3D camera tracker and just track it. And what that will do is that will create a virtual camera so that when you add your VFX and set them to 3D layers, then it will sort of emulate what you capture in the real world. Now, sometimes if the clip is going too fast or it's giving you some weird errors, it won't 3D camera track. So the best thing you can do is go to clip one and camera track that through clip one to the end of clip one and then start on camera 
clip two and camera track that as well and just splice them together. You might need to do some futzing with the camera position between the cut, but when we get to the compositing stage, this will all blend together. So the compositing stage is where we get to start adding effects and make this blend well, because right now the cut just looks really flat and it's just, it's pretty harsh still. So. We're gonna add some effects. First, we're gonna add some particles. Now, I typically use Trap Code Particular by Red Giant, but what you can also do is build a particle system with CC Particle World or some other built-in particle system in After Effects, and then play that out, render it out, and then reverse it, and you'll get that cool like inward effect. But I just use Adobe Particular. You can still use the built-in After Effects particle generators. It will just take a little bit of time in pre-rendering. After that, you'll need a lens flare. I use optical flares by Video Copilot, but there are built-in lens flares into After Effects, and what you can do is just crank that up a lot, because you really you just need something that will make it feel like there's some impact and energy coming from this evolving figure. Next, what we have to do is we have to scale up the figure. So we have the little Kripkin, the little creature, and it's much, much smaller than, than the big guys back here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a scale keyframe maybe about one second behind the cut, and then you're gonna go forward to the cut one frame before that cut. You're gonna scale it up to match the size of the larger figure. And once you do that, it will just scale up. Now you can go into your speed graph and ramp that up so that it looks a little bit more natural and cool and fun. And then on the frame where the cut actually happens, just set the scale back to 100% and you will be fine. Now the cut is starting to look pretty good, but what you need to do next is blend it more. So there's two main effects that I will use between the cut. So we're gonna make an adjustment layer and put that on top of the cut and at the center of the cut. Where that cut actually happens, you're gonna add a couple effects. So first, we're gonna do an optics compensation. That gives like this cool fisheye lens sort of look and that will help give it some transition blending. And then you're gonna add a directional blur or a CC fast blur. And that will just blur the clips between the two so that when the cut is happening, it doesn't look nearly as jarring. Make sure you turn on motion blur as well because when that figure scales up, it'll get some motion blur as well. And at this point, the cut is actually starting to look pretty good. What are some other things we can do to make this look better? Well, first let's add some overlays. So I like to add some smoke. It helps add some atmosphere to the scene. And what you're gonna need to do for that is basically add some smoke layers. You can find them online and then set them to 3D layers. And that's why we set up that 3D camera before. So then when that smoke is coming in, it looks as if it blends into the scene. After that, let's add some color correction. So I typically shoot in a flatter profile on my camera. So I just bump up the saturation, add some contrast to make it look better. And then at that point, once you're done with the blending, the transitioning and all that fun stuff, your clip is done. You can either post this on Instagram or you can put this together in a much larger piece like I did. And with all of that said, that is everything that I wanted to cover in this basic visual effects video for toy videos or product videos. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below or feel free to hit me up in the DMs on Instagram at John Jags Knee, and I'll send you a video message. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but that's it. I want to let you know that I just opened up my store on my website, www.johnjagsney.com, and I am offering my first product for free. It is an epic 80s style title in honor of a wondrous movie coming out. That was a terrible wink. And I hope you enjoy that. It is free right now, so go ahead and check that out if you are interested in some 80s stuff. But that's it. I will leave you with this. Eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Have a good day, my friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Hey.